What we're going to be going over here is fixed overhead variance analysis and we're going to look at it in terms of standard costing here and we're going to be laying out these variances on a graph here to understand the different variances. Okay so when we're talking about variance analysis we really got three different amounts that we're going to have to be deal with or three different budgeted amounts and they would be the standard amount in this case we're using standard costing here and then we'd have the actual results for the period that we'd be looking at and then based on our actual results and our standard that's established here for in this case our fixed overhead we're going to determine the flexible amount okay so starting with our standard amount that's going to be the standard quantity times some standard price here and in this case we're looking at fixed overhead so we're going to have some uh, fixed overhead here uh, it's going to be based on and really we're going to be basing it on uh, direct labor hours here for our fixed overhead but there's going to be and nonetheless there's going to be some standard unit quantity here for a fixed overhead times some standard unit price so that's going to be our standard cost and then the next thing we have to know is our actual results here that we have for the period and they're going to be the actual quantity times some actual price that we pay here for that fixed overhead again on a unit on a per unit basis here so actual quantity times some actual price that equals our actual results now knowing our actual amount or results for the period versus the standard that we have established then we can determine our flexible amount and that's really going to take we we'll be taking the actual quantity here from our actual results in this case for our fixed overhead here times the standard price here from our standard cost actual quantity times our standard price equals our flexible budgeted amount here okay and really what we're looking at here for our uh, variance analysis here using standard costing really we're looking at our actual results here for the period versus some standard cost that's been established so our actual results are going to be our actual cost and our standard amount is going to be some predetermined standard uh, uh, quantity and price here that we establish for our fixed overhead okay so let's go down here and let's look at our table here to determine our different variances so we're going to be looking at a spending variance and a volume variance here for a fixed overhead and again our variances here they're going to are going to be based on direct labor hours here we're going to base our fixed overhead on direct labor hours in this case that's allocation based okay so first for our spending variance that's the difference between our actual versus our flexible budgeted amount and I've got it laid out here color coded here so when we're looking about this fixed overhead we're going to be looking at some amount here times some uh, standard price on a per unit base or some price on a per unit basis for a fixed overhead okay so for our actual amount that's just going to be taking the actual hours used here that would be like direct labor hours that we're looking at times the actual fixed rate here and we're going to have to determine a particular overhead rate here based on some uh, on there's direct labor hours that we allocated it on okay so the actual use hours used times the actual fixed rate is the actual amount here and then our flexible amount that's going to be based on dh here those are actually what they call denominator hours those are the total in this case total budgeted direct labor hours that we have here so that's going to we'll take those total uh, those denominator hours those dh here times the standard fixed overhead rate so we're getting the standard rate off our standard here okay so that's our flexible amount and then our standard amount that's just going to be the standard hours allocated or allowed here times some standard fixed rate okay so for our spending variance it'll just be again the difference between the actual and flexible amount and uh, I, between those two amounts we have nothing here that's in common as far as that we can factor out so we're just be looking at the difference so the actual amount would be the actual hour use times some actual fixed rate here and then we would be comparing it to the flexible amount which is the standard fixed rate times those total denominator hours those total budgeted direct labor hours so that difference gives us our spending variance and then our volume variance again that's the difference between our flexible and our standard amount and the common factor that these both share here is the standard fixed rate here. So we can factor that out. So our variance is just gonna be the difference between our denominator hours as total uh, budgeted direct labor hours versus the standard hours allowed. So denominator hours versus our standard hours allowed, that difference times the standard fixed rate here. 
Okay, so those are our variances. Now let's go down on our graph here and lay them out on a graph form here. So along our x-axis here on the graph, we're going to have those direct labor hours. Remember, that's the basis here for our fixed uh, rates here, the actual fixed rate and the standard fixed rate. And that, along our y-axis here, that's going to be our fixed overhead cost. So we're going to be graphing our, our allocation base here, our direct labor hours versus our cost. And then we have two lines here that we have established. One here is that green upward sloping line. And that's really the standard fixed rate here for our, our fixed overhead times the, in this case, our basis, the direct labor hours. That is our really our variable standard amount here. And then we have the other line here. That is our constant fixed rate. The blue line goes straight across here. Same amount, direct it doesn't change with the direct labor hours, whereas this one here did change with our allocation base, the direct labor hours based on our standard fixed rate. This one is just standard, right? Goes same amount, constant. And that's really that uh, flexible amount. That's this standard fixed rate here times those total denominator hours. Okay, so now let's go down and let's look at what we're doing here. So for our direct labor hours, uh, our basis here, we really have three different points that we're concerned with. It's going to be the standard hours allowed, the actual hours used, and then those total denominator hours here. So what you're going to do here in each of these cases, we're going to move up to our, vari our, our variable uh, costing line here versus our standard amount here. So let's first look at the standard hours allowed here. Okay, we move up here to our variable amount here, our variable line here, move across to our fixed overhead costing. That's the standard fixed rate times the standard hours allowed. And let's go up to our uh, chart here to see where that fits out. Okay, so this is our standard amount that we, we were looking at here, down here. Okay, and then the next point we have to look at is the actual hours used. In this case, it's going to be based on the, our, it's going to be based on our fixed rate here, that blue line here. That's going to be where we intersect that. And then we're going to move up on that to uh, another point here. We got a point. It's going to be the actual fixed rate versus our standard fixed rate here. It's different from, it's actually different, it's different because of that amount here. We got the standard fixed rate here that we were using here. And up here, the actual hours used that we have uses the actual fixed rate. So that's the difference between the actual fixed rate here, the difference in the standard fixed rate. So we got those two different points to deal with for the actual hours used here. Okay, and then we got one last point here. That's that uh, denominator hours. And that's really where our variable line here and that slope here was is really the, the standard. Fi I got budgeted fixed here, but it should be the standard fixed rate here. That's our slope here. It increases at that rate times the denom total direct labor hours. So where they our fixed amount here intersects with our uh, denominator hours here, or these our flexible amount here, or that increasing amount here, that we're going to be looking at too here. So that's going to be other point of interest here, or that we use here for our variances. Okay. So let's look at our different variances. First for our total variance, that's simply the difference between the standard fixed rate times the standard hours allowed here. And that was based on the standard hours allowed here versus the actual fixed rate times our actual hours used here. That's the total amount. Okay, and you go up to our chart, you can see that's the difference between our actual amount here versus our standard amount here. So that's our total variance that we're looking at the total variance uh, as far as costing here. That was our cost here, difference between our total costing variance here. And then if you go down over here, that was the difference between standard hours allowed and the actual hours used here in terms of these our basis here, our direct labor hours. Okay, so that's our total amount. And then let's look at the next one. That's the fixed overhead rate volume variance. And that's going to be the difference here is going to be uh, the difference between our standard fixed rate times the standard hours allowed versus our standard fixed rate times the denominator hours. Then that's going to be looking at it in those terms here. That's the difference between our, our basis here or our standard amount here versus 
the flexible amount over here. Blue line versus this little red line. And let's just see where those came from. If we go up to our amount here, you can see our flexible amount was at denominated hours times our standard fixed rate. And then the standard amount was standard hours allowed times the standard fixed rate. So that's our volume variance. You can see it over here. That's our volume variance on our graph here. Now for our spending variance, overhead spending variance, that's the difference between our flexible amount, the standard fixed rate, denominator hours here, times our actual fixed rate times the actual hours used there. And when we mean spending rate, it's really the difference between the S standard fixed rate here and the actual fixed rate. Those two different prices. You can see here, because they don't fall, they're not, the standard fixed rate tells the denominator hours is on this blue line here in the actual fixed rate versus the actual hours used here. It just moves up. It actual fixed rate is different from our standard fixed rate. And again, it was based on these actual hours used that we were looking at. Okay, so that's our fixed overhead spending variance. And really, we're gonna have another quantity to look at here. But the point is, before we move on, we're gonna look at a couple other variances here. Before we move on here, let's under, let's understand here uh, these favorable versus unfavorable variances. So if we take what our standard hours allowed, which is our standard costing amount here, anything, if we use less than the standard hours allowed here or allocated, then we have a favorable variance. That is, if we move up to our costing, our costing line here at any point, move it over here, a fixed overhead cost here is going to be less than the standard fixed rate times the standard hours allowed. And then anything on the other side or greater than the standard hours allowed is going to be an unfavorable variance because it's going to, if you move up here, and let's look at it in terms of our actual hours used here, at it, it, it both the fixed rate here and our variable amount here, you can see the cost here is greater than the standard fixed rate times the standard hours used here. So that's our favorable less if we use less than the standard hours allowed unfavorable if we use greater than the standard hours allowed here okay so let's go and let's let's look at it here this this other point we have this point here that we established where they do intersect here uh, denominator hours here that is versus our variable amount here just we have to make that point that's where they're equal here that's all I make that point here and then let's go and let's look at two other variances here. Okay, I didn't go through the calculations on this. I just want to make the point here. We're going to have two different variances we deal with here. I'm using the same graph that we had here before, but we're going to be talking about the idle capacity variance and the planned production volume variance here. So really the idle capacity variance here is really going to be looking at two different points here. It's going to be based on our actual hours used here those direct labor hours allocation basis here, where they where it intersects our variable amount or, or our rate here, our standard fixed rate here, versus the fixed amount here, the standard fixed rate times the denominator hours. That space here between those two points is our idle capacity variance. And it really that's the difference between our standard fixed rate times the actual hours used here or times their actual hours used versus the st standard fixed rate times the denominator hours. So this is our flex was our flexible budgeted amount here that we were looking at. Okay, that's just to make a point, that's our idle capacity variance. Now the other variance that we're looking at is this planned production volume variance. And really what we're looking at is this point. This is the, what's key here with this, where these two lines intersect here. Our green line here with that variable amount for the standard fixed rate here versus our constant amount here, our standard fixed rate here times the denominator hours. So the point is here, that's based on those denominator hours. There's total budgeted direct labor hours that we're looking at. So on the, this side of it, that planned production volume variance is anything, the difference between the blue line here and a corresponding point here on the green line here. The blue line is constant all the way across, green line is increasing. So that's our production volume variance. And re really we look at it in both points here. At the inflection point, we also have the same thing. We're looking in, in this case, when we get past the inflection point here where the uh, variable rate here times the total direct labor hours is greater than our fixed rate here, the standard fixed rate times the denominator hours. 
then it would be the other case here. And we're going to say the difference here is a favorable variance here because our fixed rate here is less than our variable amount based on our, uh, our standard fixed amount here based on a direct labor hour. So that's a favorable variance. And on this side of the line, on this side of data and flex plane, it's an unfavorable variance for our planned production volume variance. And our planned production volume variance is really uh, this, our equation here. So it's the not total direct labor hours or there's denominator hours that we're looking at versus the standard hours allowed. That difference times the standard fixed, uh, fixed overhead rate here. Okay, so we looked at those two, two extra uh, variances. I didn't go through the calculations, but just pointing them out here on our graph here. And then one last thing here, just to go down here and look at our key, just to understand it here. This actual, our, for our fixed overhead here, the act, AF stands for our actual fixed overhead rate. And really what we're looking about in both our actual and standard fixed overhead rate is just taking some total fixed costs for the period in dividing by our total direct labor hours. We're using our direct labor hours here as our allocation basis here. Okay, so standard fixed, FF in red here stands for a standard fixed overhead rate. AHU here in green was our actual hours used here based on our allocation here, actual hours was those direct labor hours here. And then SHA in blue here is our standard hours allowed based on our standard costing here. And then DH, those are those total budgeted direct labor hours that we're using as our allocation basis here. And they refer to them as the denominator hours because they end up in the denominator here in our equation to calculate our uh, overhead rate here looking at our total fixed overhead rate versus our total denominator hours or direct labor hours. And when we talk total fixed rates here, uh, for our AF, that would be the actual total fixed rate versus SF would be the standard amount that we allocated for a total fixed overhead rate. Okay, so that'll end our discussion here, uh, looking at uh, what is a fixed overhead variance analysis here. And we went through those various, and variances, spending, volume, and then we looked at idle capacity and planned production volume variances.